Today, Cities of Migration presents a groundbreaking initiative in our Big Idea series, Oslo Extra Large, Measuring Up, Making Diversity Count. For the next 45 minutes, we are joined by Toralv Mo, Senior Advisor, Business Development and Diversity with the City of Oslo, who will brief us on the City's ambitious plan to be a city for all and the success that they have achieved so far in creating equity both across city services and the governance of a city. We'll learn how Oslo is putting its intercultural policies to the test and raising its diversity and integration index, measuring the city's progress on equality, opportunity, and inclusion since it's the 2001 launch of its Oslo Extra Large campaign. And here to help us get the whole story, I'm delighted to introduce Irina Guidakova, who's head of a division at the Directorate of Democratic Governance at the Council of Europe, where she coordinates the World Forum for Democracy and manages the Council's Intercultural Cities Program. Irina will interview Toralv after um, he makes his presentation, and then we'll open the floor to questions from you, from our audience. Um, I'd like to say that describing Irena as a program manager at Intercultural Cities does not do justice to the major role she has played in shaping the Intercultural Cities model, developing a program of technical assistance, and establishing a vibrant network of over 60 intercultural cities across Europe and uh, increasingly further abroad. Um, we're very pleased to welcome Irina to the Cities of Migration Learning Exchange. Um, Irina, I turn the, the mic over to you. Welcome. Hello, everyone. This is Irina. Hello, Kim. Uh, thank you very much for inviting. Um, as Kim said, I managed intercultural cities, um, and we could not have achieved the results that are visible today uh, without the help of practitioners and experts such as Toral from Oslo. And we are really happy to have him with us today. Toralv is the Senior Advisor on Integration and Diversity to the Vice Mayor of Cultural Affairs and Business Development of Oslo, Norway. He has a master's degree in Social Anthropology, Economics and History, and 24 years of experience with the municipalities of Oslo and Tromsø, as well as the State Agency of Integration and Migration. In Oslo, he's responsible for coordinating initiatives and measures for integration and diversity, such as the Oslo Extra Large, of which you will hear more later, and the implementation of the European Charter on Integrating Cities. His experience includes benchmarking, both local and international, through Intercultural Cities Index, the EuroCities Mixed Cities, and implementing projects. And I must say that Thorov is a really knowledgeable and inspiring person. And I give the floor back to Kim. Thank you very much. Um, let's uh, welcome Thorov uh, to, the, to the Cities of Migration Learning Exchange. Welcome. Thank you. And thank you for the introduction, uh, Irena. Um, I'm very happy to be back on the, on the Cities of Migration webinar. I had a presentation a couple of years ago, and it's delightful to have a, a really global audience. Um, I'm talking from uh, City Hall uh, in Oslo. It's a building you may know as the as, uh, as the site of the um, um, Nobel Pre Prize ceremony. I'm going to talk to you about the delivery of of a message. Um, uh, Oslo Extra Large, the Oslo <coughs> brand, is really a, a message message about uh, about the tolerance of about uh, giving room for everybody who wants to live in our city. And I'll talk about the use of documentation and international cooperation to deliver that message. Um, and going to say something about the, the context, the, 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 the statistics. I'm going to speak about how this policy and uh, how the mainstreaming of, the, of, of diversity has come about in, in Oslo. And I'm going to say and end with how the delivery of this message have contributed to, to build public 
and political confidence around integration and diversity. Um, it's really the delivery of a big idea, so, so it's great to, to be on this series of, of, of webinars. Um, the renewal of the Oxley policy, uh, um, it will be available, the documents and so on, uh, on, on, uh, on uh, cities of migration, I guess, and on intercultural cities. It's about equal opportunities in education, employment, and housing. And it's about mainstreaming diversity in uh, the workforce of the city and in the delivery of public services. Um, the international contribution to this policy, as it was renewed now in 2013, actually just a couple of weeks ago in City Council, um, it has been twofold. It's been very important to have the Intercultural City Index. The text on this slide is uh, partly in Norwegian. It's from a headline in the main newspaper when the, the, the policy was, was the renewal of the policy was launched, and it says Oslo on the top of integration in Europe. So it's been important in the in the actual delivery of the of new policies, and also on the content. Uh, especially on governance, uh, on, the, on, on, on the policy not being just a city, uh, a policy for the city, but for the for the for, for the city as a society. Uh, it, uh, the the inter, inter, international contribution also come from uh, Euro cities and uh, and networks within uh, the European Union. Uh, and the picture is here is on uh, our chief uh, uh, executive mayor signing the European Integrate, Integrating Cities Charter. Oslo is currently one of the cities in Europe uh, with, the, with, with the highest population growth. Uh, it's very few cities in Europe that experience this. And we expect that the city will grow with uh, maybe uh, 150,000 people in the next 10 to 15 years. Um, it has grown uh, with uh, some uh, 130,000 people in, in the recent 10 years. And uh, very many, some, something like 10 to 15,000 people come and settle in Oslo each year. Mostly uh, people seeking work, and but also students. To uh, deliver the new policy, we have used a lot of, of, of facts about the city, about, about how we are doing both in, in the important areas of uh, employment and, uh, and uh, education and house ownership. Uh, the numbers are quite good. The unemployment rate among migrants is about 7%. It's 2% overall. Uh, there is a lack of people, for a, a lack of workers in Norway and also in Oslo. Um, also, when we see at, uh, look at education, the numbers are, are really good when it comes to the second generation, with, uh, where, where um, the young complete secondary education at the s same level, more or less, as, uh, and, and starts um, higher education at the same level as the majority. Uh, on this slide, we'll also see that we measure uh, the, 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 the delivery of, of equal services. Um, and we also ask about the, the uh, satisfaction with public services and about the, the sense of belonging and contentment with living in Oslo. All the time, we see we are measuring the gap the differences. If there are differences, 
between uh, minority and uh, majority, there is a need for, for, for measures. The delivery of the policy is also very much dependent on understanding of the, of the urban economy of Oslo. Most migrants come in the service economy of the city, in, in the, um, transport, in uh, food and, and entertainment, in, in the, the health services. Uh, recently, we've also seen that, that uh, the <coughs> uh, migrants, especially from Eastern Europe, have made a huge contribution to the building industry. But it's also important to see the role of migration in a knowledge economy, um, an economy depending on, on the really qualified people. What we see here is that, that uh, now minority young adults uh, constitute something like 20% of the students, but they also uh, constitute something about something like 50%, one in two of people uh, with the highest degree PhDs. Uh, minority students, minority kids uh, enroll in, 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 uh, in university at a high rate, uh, especially in, 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 in studies like mathematics and engineering at a higher rate than, uh, than the majority. Um, this is a message that the business community really understands. Um, the results, uh, and there are much more, I can't go into detail here, but they are documented in, 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 in our policy documents. Um, some, so many are in the areas we have made some, some success. It has been a long history of policies for social mobility, beginning long, long before migration was an issue. issue. And that's maybe one of the reasons oh. that it has been more, more easy to, to make, uh, to make uh, the small adjustments necessary on, in, in many, in, in education, policy, in, in work, employment policies and so on. Because uh, for the last 100 years, uh, many of the policies in Norway have been geared towards social mobility and to, 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 to lower the thresholds. Um, and it has been uh, policies aimed at, at, at women, at, at the working class, at every kind of groups that uh, that uh, uh, in some terms, some some senses have been mar marginal to, to mainstream society, and these policies have been really beneficial to to minorities and mi migrants, and especially their children. So there has been since the 50s different kind of policies that open up uh, possibilities for people. Um, and, and strong institutions working for, the, for this. Um, two other aspects with the, in the, um, the situation in Norway is, is the right to vote uh, and a strong civic sector. In Norway, one in two is a member of an, of an uh, NGO and one in three among minorities. Uh, to, to be a member of an NGO mainly maybe trade unions or, 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 or a religious congregation, but it's, it's a really a place where networks and connections and, 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 and alliances are made. So in different areas, and this, this has something, this, this view on governance is something that the intercultural city has really opened up for us to, to see that the, the, to, to, to make an intercultural urban society, you need all stakeholders to, to make their contribution. And we've seen that in, in the main areas of education, sports, culture, and business. And uh, um, 
to take some uh, one example in the business sector, the global future by the Confedera Confederation of, of Norwegian Business. This is uh, an initiative opening up opportunities uh, of leadership with, uh, for, for uh, talented people with minority backgrounds. And this is an initiative that, that the, the business community has taken it uh, as, as thought of and, and planned and implemented uh, themselves and, and afterwards uh, come to and talk talk to the city about cooperation and, and mutual mutual benefit, and this is the case in many areas in our cooperation with the, with the university and colleges, with the sporting sporting uh, um, sport clubs and so on, and we also see this in politics. Many people with minority background have joined political parties. There's been open opportunities there. And as one result of that, 16 of 59 council members of, of, the, of the city council have a minority background. There's also lots of uh, immigrant organizations uh, also, and also, and they are important for, for the new arrivals as an introduction. Many people with uh, uh, now a political career have started in such organizations. So what all this has done to, to the Oxlow message is that it um, has given uh, public confidence to, to the work on integration and, and the benefits of, of uh, diversity. It's not, it's not the case that there is no discrimination or xenophobia or injustice uh, or, or prejudices in, in Oslo. That's not the story. But the story of integration and, and the pos positive uh, effects of integration and diversity is also a strong story in our city. And it's very much the same story as, as we've seen in the history of Norway during the last 100 years at least. Um, this year we are celebrating 100 years of, of, of um, the right to vote to women. And there are lots of parallels in that story to the story about uh, minority rights and, and social mobility for, for minorities. And this slide shows some of the that even if <coughs> children of my, uh, migrants are not doing uh, as good as they should in primary school, they are doing better in higher education uh, uh, and in university. So, so there is a, uh, a very strong evidence for social mobility. And we also see that on on, on, on the particip participation of women in work, uh, where some groups with very low participation in, 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 in work among women change through the generations. So their daughters have a higher, higher percentage of, of, of working. And work and, and, and education is really the building blocks of, of social mobility. The role of the Oxlo campaign and, and the role of, of, of uh, our work in City Hall has really been to document this story and to, to make it credible. And uh, the, 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 the ways we have learned that through, through uh, intercultural cities has really been remarkable. And, uh, and, and it's been very, very fruitful. Um, and I will end now on this last slide. Uh, since we have this very high migration rate and, uh, and, and, and growth in of the city, it's, it's easy mathematics to see that minorities will be in majority in Oslo if we continue the same way for 10 more years. 
or 15 more years. Um, now the percentage uh, uh, of minorities is, uh, is 30 percent. It's 60 percent among children and youth. So the future is already present. But when we ask politicians and we ask people, or as in this case you see on the slide, when the, when the, the, the main newspaper asked people, the answers were really um, relaxed. I must say. 25% uh, said, said that more immigrants was, was really positive and contribu contributed to, to a more vibrant city life and a better economy. And some 40% some said it didn't matter much. And politicians asked, most of them said that they don't worry, ethnicity is not the issue. So I'll end on that. Yes, hello. Hello. Carl, thank you so much. Thank you so much for this presentation. I think it's now my turn to ask you a couple of questions. Mm -hmm. um, and you will recognize that they come from um, our experience uh, as intercultural city uh, platform. Um, Oslo's success. Uh, as you explained, uh, is based very much on the tradition of, of Norway and of Oslo itself as a country of equity, participation, and inclusion. And this is mm -hmm. part of the story. But the other part of the story, which I think is more recent and, much, and, and very important at the moment, is that you have managed to make the case of um, diversity as a resource, uh, the case for the diversity advantage, um, and the fact that Oslo uh, as a city will grow and will compete in today's world because it has all of this migrant um, vibrancy in its, uh, within the city and with all the different environments and institutions. But to make that case, which is not the predominant type of discourse that we hear at any, in, in any case in, uh, in Europe, you needed some allies. You needed, I guess, uh, to associate with organizations, associations, uh, to support you in delivering that message. Um, can you develop a little bit about the partnerships that you had and what kind of alliances you created? Yes, the, this, this question really exemplified the, the, how policies um, uh, have, have evolved. When I started in City Hall some 12 years ago, uh, in integration was in the welfare, welfare department because migrants were seen, were seen as some, some people who needed help. And then it shifted to, to be uh, in, the, in the education department because it was important to, to lift the, the new, new generation, the, the, the children of, of migrants. And uh, for the last couple of years we've been part of the, the business department because there there's also a need for policy, but also the, there is uh, lots of opportunities there. And it, it, it reflects that, uh, that my migration is seen as, a, as, a, as an asset or a resource. Not always used in the best way. Uh, lots of, there is lots of people also in Oslo with, with a high education that don't get the, the, the work they, according to, to, to that education or that competence. But we see that the, the, the business community uh, is, is really uh, uh, occupied. They are really interested to, to cooperate with the city and, and with, the, with the national government, <coughs> national government, of course. And uh, as I said, much of the initiative, of course, we have had meetings with business leaders and, and, and organizations, but now the, mess, the, 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 the initiatives really in the business community itself, uh, and I showed two, two examples, the, the, um, the Global Future Initiative, where, uh, where <coughs> uh, some, uh, I think it's been about 50 people with really high competence uh, has been invited into, into a program with mentors 
and with uh, and to get better jobs and, and leadership roles and and, and boardroom roles in in in, in the in, uh, in the business um, in in the business world, and they have come to us to to cooperate and give some some funding, but the initiative has been there, and we see a lot of those kind of initiatives these days. Um, I have another question here. This one um, has come in from, I think, our Twitter feed or uh, the chat room, uh, and the question is, the question comes from Nuruddin Iradi, and uh, he is interested in the question of whether diversity organizations are on the same uh, sort of line of thinking, on the same bridge as diversity politicians. Um, do politicians in Oslo, he asked, use the same answers and solutions on integration issues um, that are brought to the table by um, community-led organizations? Um, can, can, you, can you hear me now? Um, yes, Torov, um, welcome. OK. Yeah, great. I, I apologize for that. We mm. had a question on how the city of Oslo has dealt with some of the challenges to uh, diversity in the new mainstream, how it's dealt with issues of, um, uh, of uh, discrimination, of uh, Islamophobia, etc. cetera. Um, would you like to comment on that? Very, very shortly, uh, we have uh, launched uh, a new idea to, to support networks as uh, in uh, as in Barcelona on on um, the anti-rumor network in Barcelona, and um, to support people uh, who are citizens want to 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 join the discussions, uh, especially on the internet, and and talk against prejudice. Uh, the other thing we do is to monitor uh, gaps. Uh, of access to services, uh, access to employment, and so on, and results of services like in education. So we are constantly reminded on the, on 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 on, uh, on, um, on 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 the gap between minority and majority, and that is very broadly based in 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 uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's wonderful. The uh, Barcelona anti-rumor campaign is really an exceptional campaign. Um, and that's something you can also read about at Cities of Migration. Uh, we have another question here uh, from Nuruddin Iradi, uh, and uh, which I've, I think n he asks, um, I think this is a question really about processes for consulting um, community organizations in Oslo. He asks whether diversity organizations are, um, are in, are aligned with um, with the work of politicians, and how politicians in Oslo um, uh, are working with community organizations to bring their issues to the table. Okay, uh, when we when we worked with this new policy, we had a, a series of roundtable conferences where we invited people who with with uh, uh, bro knowledge about the situation on, on this issue about integration, and also people or, or organizations that would be critical to the to to uh, the views of, uh, of of city hall. So we invited people in to to comment and discuss, and and uh, we also used lots of uh, researches and and. and uh, people from the university and research institutions. So that is part of how we make policies, really. Um, I have I have another question here, this time from Timara Zer um, in Alberta, Canada, who is involved in the upcoming municipal elections in Canada. He asks, do you have any suggestions on how to increase candidate and voter participation um, by newcomer and minority communities. Uh, Torov? Yes, um, I think on to uh, th there would be a quite a, quite a lot of p politicians to to discuss this with. But uh, what I've seen is that 
There has been lots of room in the political parties. Uh, I'm not a politician myself, but there has been a lot of room. There is uh, uh, not that many uh, the, the, the numbers of uh, people in, in who are members of parties have been declining for, for decades. So I think that it's been when when new people are wanted to, to get into politics, they have been uh, welcome in, in all parties really. In, in all parties represented in the city hall. So they've been very welcoming culture within the political parties. Um, there is also some, uh, and, and there has been uh, support to campaigns to, 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 to get also uh, migrants to, and, and minorities to vote. And we have uh, quite a lot of work in schools on democracy, on, on voting in schools just to, to, to school boards and so on, but also as, as a part of the election system where there are where, where young people are invited to, to, to participate in, in politics even, they, even if they don't have the actual vote. So I think these two things have contributed to, to, to bringing a lot of young people, lots of young people with minority background into politics in Oslo. Very good. I have, I have a, a question now from Fidel Mutsuarazibo from the Immigrant Council of Ireland. Uh, he asks uh, about the role of a vibrant civil society and what role it's played in Oslo's success. Um, can you say a word or two in relation to the importance of political leadership in promoting interculturalism in the city? That it's might be all something Irina might like to comment on yeah. too after you pour off. On, on political, uh, on leadership is important. Uh, for this is about change, and 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 and, uh, and uh, lots of people can be be skeptical about change. So you really need leadership. But what we have seen about the organisations is that they need they need members. Uh, sport clubs need members. They need parents to to, to run the sports clubs. Uh, uh <coughs> And, and in, in church uh, congregations, they need members, and uh, they need people to run the run the organisations. And we see this all around that they set integration and diversity uh, goals for themselves, and afterwards they come to us to to cooperate, or, or maybe need some 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 funding for special things. But the goals and the and the measures and how to do it, they're really doing it themselves. I think um, Oslo, because of its recent immigration, it's only in the last 20 years or so uh, that people have come in in numbers, um, have avoided some of the pitfalls, I think, of the, the multiculturalism type uh, approaches where migrants mostly associate among themselves by ethnic group and form for uh, kinship associations. I think Oslo's uh, organizations that are generalist and not you know, mainstream have been very quick at opening up uh, to members that come from uh, other countries. And so that has, uh, in a way, not given a chance for kin associations to become so, so strong that, in a way, they occupy uh, the associative field. But maybe that's my, just my hypothesis. Well, I think that's very interesting. So um, promoting a, a vibrant civil society has an important role to play in, in creating the kind of um, a political and uh, community leadership that, that cities like Oslo has. This, this re relates to a, a question we have from Robin Wilson, who um, would like to know from Torov about the right to vote in local elections in Oslo. She'd like to know which groups of non-citizens have the right to vote in Oslo. Uh, everybody coming from uh, abroad who has stayed uh, in uh, uh, had a legal residence in in Norway for three years has has uh, has the right to to vote in local elections, and that is imp what is important for for Oslo. Uh, to, to vote in national elections, you have to be a citizen, and that takes, I think, some seven years. But uh, but the right to to vote and also to be elected is uh, is awarded after three years of, of legal residence from all all over the world, anywhere. 
Very good. Um, I have a, a, another question uh, here uh, that's come via Irina about whether um, you have an affirmative action, affirmative action program to encourage minorities to enter higher education. Certainly your statistics, your success in this area is mm. incredibly impressive. Well, we have, uh, or not really, not really the city, but the the, the university has a, an access program called NIFA, where they um, what they really do is to train uh, informants at school. Secondary school students uh, uh, are trained as mentors at their own schools, and and they are trained to give advice on education. Uh, so, so not 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 a, not a, uh, affirmative action program really, but a more a mentor and in information campaign run by the university to increase applicants. Uh, <coughs> so, so, but I think the, I think that the the, the schools uh, are, are geared towards the social mobility and it is some some expert can say how that is done. Uh, but uh, but it's always al also been very important that it has been the main priority of of parents to get their children into se into into higher education as a way to 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 combat discrimination also to, to open up opportunities. Um, so that has been very important that the, the main main issue of, of any migrant organization for the last 20 years have been the education of their, of their children. Okay, well thank you. I have one last question that um, uh, from Goran addressed to Irina uh, asking broadly about the Council of Europe's response to some of the crises that we are seeing um, in Europe and elsewhere these days. But perhaps we can just reduce the question to um, the simple question of, of of, um, of whether the economic crisis has, um, of how it's impacted, whether it has spurred some of the work, the wonderful work, in fact, that we're seeing in cities like uh, uh, Oslo, whether it's, it's in, it is incenting cities to do more to address um, uh, the issue of, and the importance of, of immigrant integration. Um, I think you're talking about Goran's question. Mm -hmm. About the incidents in Sweden, Turkey, is that the one? Yes, although I, I don't think right. we want to go into the... Yeah, that's a very complex question. What I could say is that um, I think the, the reasons for the incidents or urban unrest in different countries are very, very different. And some can possibly be partly um, associated with a, with a crisis and the growing social divide. Um, but I could give you the example of the city of Butchirka, which is in the... Uh, St greater Stockholm region, and which is uh, the most diverse city in that region and also one of the poorest. But because it has very strong uh, inclusion policies, it's also an intercultural city, uh, it has suffered a lot less from uh, violence and, and incidents of urban uh, riots than other satellite cities uh, around Stockholm. So I think that's an example. It, it just so shows that if you do very strong uh, trust-building policies, including work with police, work with associations, work with the business community, you can be resilient even in times of generalized crisis. Oh, that, that's very good. And Torov, would you agree that the, the, that the work that the city of Oslo has done has helped mitigate some of the negative impacts of the crisis? Uh, of course, uh, Norway is in, a, is in a, another economic uh, situation, but uh, of course, there are lots of people now coming from from southern southern Europe, uh, and lots of them are also uh, migrants from from South Africa and, uh, and from South America and South Africa and Africa. So. Uh, we see that, and of course, here there are some opportunities to, to get work in, 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 in Oslo and also the rest of the country. 
well, where they where they will be embraced by um, by an open and welcoming uh, city of Oslo. We we are thank you so much, Toral. Thank you so much, Irena. We are we're now at the end of our of our Q and A. I'd like to close by asking each of you um, a couple of very short questions. This is um, we, we're only looking for a, a few words from each of you. For for Toral, um, one of the clear manifestations of success is the fact that with really only two decades of migration history, Oslo has achieved almost perfect parity in the political representation of migrants. I understand 27% of um, people uh, with migrant background in the city's population has um, achieved equity with 27% representation in city council. That's an extraordinary um, um, milestone, I think, for, for not just for Europe, but for the world. Um, so what is the secret, in, in one or two words, what is the secret to your success? I think that, uh, that uh, as, as I've spoken about, that we have structures, that we have policies, that we have, uh, have, have uh, uh, a policy on social mobility that has worked in Norway uh, long before there, there was uh, any, any any numbers of migrants coming here, so th that has been important. But the most important has that uh, people with minority backgrounds themselves have taken these opportunities and, and used them, and 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 and, and sh uh, also got very much respected, respect in return from what they have done. So uh, I think that is that also that in policies it has been like that when. The two groups uh, who have suffered mo most from from um, from this discrimination in 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 uh, in, uh, in Oslo, the Norwegian Pakistan, in Norwegian <coughs> Somali, the Somali group, they have the highest percentage of, of people in, in politics. Uh, the people who have gone into the work and work that through from from the floor to, to to leadership positions has been the the Norwegian Tamil and they have the highest representation of of minorities in trade unions. So you see this that that they have also used the opportunities and 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 and, and uh, that is maybe in the face we are now the the, the steps that open up opportunities for others and build this confidence in in, in, in the society. Thank you. That, that's excellent. And, and Farina, Irina, uh, my question to you, um, Oslo is, is a flagship intercultural city um, and a trailblazer across Europe. Um, what is the secret to its success? I think that the, the reason mostly is that the city has managed to recognize that uh, migrants and minorities, while they require support and help in the first period of their installation, what they mostly require are opportunities. And they have done the homework by placing the integration work in the epicenter of, of city uh, development, in the business unit. And I think this is really important, that the business department oversees the entire set of issues around integration, because that gives you a completely different lens uh, with which to regard migrants, not as a social case, <laughs> but as a resource. And I think uh, this political move of placing integration issues within business has been really one of the main uh, assets they, they have. Well, it's very good. Um, thank you very much once again. Um, it's time to, for us to end today's session. We'll, we will, um, so on behalf of all of our participants, I'd like to thank Toral Mo with the City of Oslo and Irina Guidikova with Intercultural Cities at the Council of Europe. I'd like everyone uh, today to imagine this excellent work being interpreted in your own city, adapted by your own organizations and, and changing the cities that you live in. We'd like to hear your stories and share more good practice, so please stay connected.